Hello, and welcome once again to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Holler, thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. And I wish all of you that subscribe, you comment and respond. Thank you. Today's lesson, ladies and gentlemen, mysteries of Scripture are sometimes best left mysteries. Now, to fully understand this, uh, we're going to look at Scripture, of course, and we're going to talk a little bit about how religions uh, and mankind has, over the millenn millenniums now, done with uh, so-called mysteries of Scripture or of the Bible. And we're going to start out with Scripture, a very easy verse to ever remember. It's found in the book of Deuteronomy. It's chapter 29 verse 29. So let's open our Bibles to the book of De Deuteronomy, ladies and gentlemen, and let's read what it says in verse 29. <clears throat> verse 29 says, the secret belong unto the Lord, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. Now, evidently, this is something that is of the Old Testament, and this is something that is referred to as a law. But it's very important when you read Scripture to understand what it is you read, it plainly says the secret or secrets or secret things belong unto the Lord. Now we're talking about the secret things of his word, of scripture. They belong to him. And it's his will for him to have to reveal to us mysteries as he sees fit. That's key here because what mankind has done over the millenniums to distort, to falsify, to devise his own ideologies, his own doctrines, his own religion based on he, the mysteries he thinks he solved in scripture. And you always find people all the time doing videos, podcasts, social media events about the mysteries of the Bible or the mysteries of God's word, however you want to put it, or the mysteries even of the church as they, some religions in Christianity call it. And these are quite bizarre, some of these mysteries that mankind and religions come up with and they distort them and they'll use a doctrine that ends up to be wrong doctrine or they'll invent a doctrine which would be false doctrine to justify these mysteries so-called of scripture. Now that we have established first of all the secret things or the mysteries of the Bible, the mystery and secret is the same thing you can look it up in the uh, um, Strong's Concordance in the Greek mystery uh, means a secret. And there are several things in the Bible that you can read about that refer to, and the word mystery is involved in there. And a lot of them will appear early in Scripture and explain later on in Scripture. Uh, it depends on the dispensation uh, that God is working in mankind at that time. Uh, one of the great mysteries to start with that, that mankind has taken and just really perverted, twisted, and made into uh, such lies, it's um, a condemnation to them in the eyes of Jesus Christ. It is the one in, we'll start in the book of Genesis of all places, ladies and gentlemen. And we can look at the one there where God created man. And let's go to that in the book of Genesis. And we will talk about in verse 26 of chapter 1 of Genesis. And this is what it says. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and all over all of the earth, 
and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, he also went on to say in verse 27 that so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse 28, and God blessed them and, say, and God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and have subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So that is a, was a mystery. And the reason it was a mystery was because of God. The image of God now. What has mankind done with the image of God? Well, he can't leave it alone. I don't know if he does it willfully, ignorantly of it, or he just wants to be ignorant of it. It's hard to tell. But he looks at God in the flesh, represents God in the flesh when he's uh, expl or trying to explain uh, the Bible. And I've done a whole video on the image of God and what mankind has really done with it. But they always have a rendition that God looks like a human because we as humans know what we look like and what we possess. And we figure, well, that's what God must possess because he made us in, in, in his own image. So we must be a direct image of God. And this is something that is proven wrong from revealing the mystery of God as an image in Scripture. You see, and it refers back to Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to God. But if he reveals it to us, then it belongs to us. And he revealed the mystery of him being who he is, by himself, he let us know. And where would you find that? Well, let's open our Bibles to the book of John, ladies and gentlemen. And let's open our books to the book of John, chapter 4. And this is God himself telling the people of Israel and the world who he is. And it's found in verse 24. And this is Jesus of Nazareth the Messiah of Israel, telling his people, the Israelites. Verse 24, he says plainly, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You notice he put something in there besides in the spirit. It was adamant that you worship also him in truth. Now, would truth be a mystery here? But truth is revealed throughout all of Scripture. Truth is the Word of God. That is what truth is. But you see, mankind, before realizing that you don't make an image of God, you don't draw an image, you don't give him hair, you don't give him eyes, you don't give him a nose, a mouth, ears, and make him look like a human being. Because he's not. He never has been, he never will be. In fact, no one in Scripture has ever seen God because God is a spirit. You can't draw a spirit. I'm sorry. I mean, mankind even tries to come up with when they make movies of what they think ghosts look like or spirits look like. They have all kinds, whether it be a good spirit, evil spirit, whatever the case might be, they're going to come up with a rendition that is going to have human characteristics to it, isn't it? Even aliens, they have pictures, so-called, and sightings or whatever, always has what? A human element to it because they cannot come with up with anything else because they have we have a finite mind and we have finite wisdom but it bothers people when they can't understand or they don't think they're going to ever find out what mysteries are that are in scripture and a lot of times that's why i decided to do a video on the mysteries in scripture because sometimes and it's prevalent in scripture that God does not give us a revelation of the mystery per se. He doesn't expose it. He doesn't make it manifest to us. So we don't know what the mystery really is. And I tell you this from experience and studying the word of God, the way Jesus Christ commands us to in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, where we study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, ashamed, Rightly dividing the word of truth. And I've been studying scripture for 20 years now. 
And there's some mysteries I don't understand. And there is mysteries that need not to be understood because it is irrelevant to us in the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today. Yet people want to know all this. They think they need to know all this and they will seek out having itchy ears people that will write about, speak about, and teach on the mysteries of Scripture, claiming to know all the mysteries that are in this book. And that is really something that if you're not involved in studying Scripture, you're not a student of the Word of God, and you don't study the Word of God the way Jesus Christ commands us to by already dividing it, you will succumb to a lot of these teachings. There's churches, denominations within Christianity that are guilty of this. There's a lot of teachers out there and theologians that are guilty of this. They do it all the time. But there are mysteries, like I said, in Scripture that are revealed to us in Scripture because of what Deuteronomy 29, 29 actually says. But mankind wants to try to use his finite mind and finite wisdom to justify what he thinks these great mysteries are to make him feel important like he understands what God is saying. See, he's helping God out by telling you what it is God really meant to say about these mysteries. And, and there's even places in uh, Paul's writings where it specifically says, I will tell you a mystery or I will show you a mystery. Did you know that? And then it goes on to explain the mystery right in Scripture. But yet mankind, for some odd reason, other than being lost and not having uh, repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth, and their minds are blinded and they're kept in the snare of the devil, they don't understand it. Or they'll refuse to believe it. And the only way they can refuse to believe it is to live the lie. And when the truth is exposed to them, even when the mystery is exposed to them, they're going to refuse it. Now, where would this mystery be that Paul would have said, I tell you a mystery. I mean, it's very apparent. Jesus told the nation of Israel about the mystery of Genesis chapter 2, verse 26, didn't he? God is a spirit. So let's go to the book of uh, Corinthians, ladies and gentlemen. And let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in your Bible. Now this is the writings in something called the Revelation of the Mystery, which we'll cover also which was totally exposed because it's a revelation. There is also a book called the Revelation, the book of Revelation. So this great mystery Paul talks about, let's start off with what he says. We're going to start out in verse 50 of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, their flesh and blood cannot enter, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised in corrupted incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Verse 53, for this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Verse 54, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. That's a great mystery, but it's been revealed. It's a mystery in Scripture, and it doesn't need mankind. It doesn't need a religion. It doesn't need your local church or denomination or theologians or anybody to explain it to you or to teach it to you. A good teacher will just read what Scripture says, and that they will leave it at that and not add their two cents to it. There's no need to. Paul says something. He says, first of all, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The flesh and blood that is of the natural man. And look, he goes on to explain it fully from verses 51 through 54. 
there's nothing I can say to add to it, and there's nothing I should say. I'm going to leave it just the way I read it, because that's what it says. That is the revealing of a mystery. That is a secret that was kept by God before the foundation of the world, but it was exposed after the cross. This revelation, this mystery, was given to us for us forever to keep. Because that's what it says in Deuteronomy 29, 29. This is, if you will, the law of grace. Salvation by grace through faith. This is part of the revelation of the mystery. This is found in the writings of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Which is mentioned in uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 25 and 26. And we'll go back and read it. But I want you to understand something. These writings from Romans through Philemon are all a secret that now has been revealed to us through scripture it's something very easy to understand because it's right there if you will in black and white written and it's the word of god and it's two things it fits perfectly with what jesus christ said in john chapter 4 verse 24 god is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth <clears throat> excuse me, the whole book, so Romans 2, Philemon, the 2,023 verses, the 33 verses that Paul wrote in the Revelation of the Mystery is all of the Spirit of God, and it is all the truth of God. We are doing exactly what it is Jesus Christ told his nation of Israel to do in the past before the cross under the law. We are doing in the age of grace because it has been exposed to us. And let me tell you something, this Revelation of the Mystery that we're going to show you now was a secret held by God. And it was brought on before the foundation of the world, never to be exposed throughout the Old Testament, never to be exposed in his gospel of the kingdom message. It was a secret until God said it's time to reveal it. Once it's revealed now, it is ours forever. But it wasn't at that time in times past before the cross because we were without Christ at that time. That's where the mystery starts to make sense. That's where you understand these mysteries that you're supposed to understand. Okay? So you need not put your finite mind and finite wisdom in there to confuse it, to try to justify what it is you think it says, and what it is you want to believe, and what it is your religion tells you it is, or your church. You leave everything out of it. It's God's word because you're supposed to worship God in the spirit and in truth. Nothing else. That leaves everything else out. Go to Romans chapter 16, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start in verse 25. Paul says, Now to him that is of power to establish you, not establish you, but to establish you, to complete you, according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Now, here's a very interesting fact to look at. When Jesus Christ revealed the revelation of the mystery of himself, according to his preaching to Paul, Jesus Christ was where? In the spirit. And what did he tell people? You worship God in spirit and in truth. Jesus Christ was giving Paul the revelation of himself in the spirit and in his truth at the same time. A mystery that was to be revealed at a certain time with a certain message that is now ours forever. It was hid in God before the foundation of the world. That's what it just said before the world began. But look what it says in verse 26. But now, after the cross, in the but now of the cross, but now is made manifest. It's been shown. It's been revealed. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of what? <clears throat> the obedience of truth and faith, actually, faith. So it's changed. It's something that becomes the truth of the word of God in spirit now is faith. Let me read that to you again, verse 26. But now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, who started this before the world began, by the way, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. 
And it's only found in the truth of the Word of God, in the Spirit. So important to understand this. And he goes on, and I've done this in other videos, but I want to also tell it to you so you can see what the what is the mystery? What is this great mystery? This great mystery is found and revealed all the way through Romans through Philemon. But if you really want to get to the very brass tactics of it, ladies and gentlemen, what it really means, you are going to find in his writings, Paul's writings. And we're going to start in uh, Ephesians chapter 3, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to start in verse 1. This is revealing, this is God giving you the revelation of the secret things of God to you today that are yours forever. Because you're worshiping God, Jesus Christ, in the spirit and in truth. Verse 1 of chapter 3 of Ephesians says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Verse 2. If you've heard of this dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, to you word. Now you heard me many times speak about the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today. That's what he's talking about. That was revealed in this secret. That was hid before the foundation of the world. Look at verse 3. How that by revelation or exposing, being made known, he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in a few words. So he wrote about it already in his other words before Ephesians. Verse 4, Whereby, when ye read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Now this is a very important verse. Let me read it to you again slowly. Verse 4 says, Whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. To understand Paul's knowledge in the, in the mystery of Christ, keep that your fingers right there and go to the book of uh, 2 Timothy, ladies and gentlemen. The scriptures are just coming out. 2 Timothy, chapter 2. And let's read a verses 7 and 8. Look what verse 7 says. And this is Paul writing. Paul was writing over here in Ephesians. He's writing here in 2 Timothy. He says in verse 7, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee an understanding in all things. Now, do you believe that? Let me read it to you again. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee an understanding in all things. Look at verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Now, getting back into the book of Ephesians, what did he say in verse 4? Whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Because he said, if you consider what I say, the Lord will give thee an understanding in all things to include what it is Paul understood about the mystery of Christ that was given to him personally. Look at verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets. By what? The Spirit. By the Spirit. We are to worship God in the Spirit and in truth. And that's exactly what the whole revelation of the mystery is all about. It is about worshiping Jesus Christ in the Spirit and in his truth that he gave to Paul. He never gave it to anybody else in Scripture ever before and never gave it again afterwards. This is it. And this is it. And, and look what it is. Let's keep reading in verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Isn't that something? It's very incredible. So easy to understand because it's revealed to you in Scripture. If you let Scripture teach you, if you're taught by the Holy Spirit, if you worship Jesus Christ in spirit and in his truth, he will show you all things that you need to know. If he doesn't show you things that you don't need to know, you do not need to know them. It is irrelevant for you at this time. Which is the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today. I just read that to you. 
Now we're going to finish up a little bit about the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ that was fully exposed to Paul, and he fully exposed it to you and me. The very nuts and bolts, if you will, of it, of what I just read in Ephesians, and I'm going to continue in the book of Colossians. Open your Bibles to the book of Colossians, chapter 1. And I'm going to start probably, let's start in verse 23. Verse 23 says, if you continue in the faith, where did you hear that about the faith? Well, you heard about that in Romans chapter 20, chapter 16, verse 26, the obedience of faith. If you continue in the faith, which is of Jesus Christ, grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which is your salvation by grace through faith, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. You better listen to what Paul has to say. That's all I can tell you. Look at verse 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the affliction, afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Verse 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God. Here we go again with the dispensation of God. He had made Paul a minister in the dispensation of the grace of God that we lived in which he lived in, which we live in today. Paul was made a minister from God. And he says, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. How many people don't even realize this is in the scripture and this is said in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ? Fulfill the word of God. So don't add any more things to the word of God. There's nothing more to be written to us in the dispensation of the grace of God, in the revelation of the mystery, where you are saved by grace through faith. Nothing else ever is going to be added or taken away. It is completed. It is finished. It is fulfilled. And look at what he says in verse 26. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Remember what Deuteronomy said, verse 29 in chapter 29, the secret things belong to God, but if he reveals them to us, they're ours forever. He will reveal the ones he wants to reveal to us. If he doesn't want us to, he will not. It is his prerogative. He is a creator of all things. Can't mankind just leave that alone? No, he can't. But let's look at what verse 27 says. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is Jesus Christ coming into you to live and dwell within you. Once you are believed by grace through faith, you have your salvation by the gospel of Jesus Christ, the finished work of the cross. It is by grace you're saved through faith, yet not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Your spirit is hid with Christ in God, in heaven. His spirit comes into you. And your, if his spirit is in you, you will worship him in spirit and in truth. There's no other way that it will happen. It has to happen that way. And he wants it to happen that way. But that's what a mystery to be revealed. And people have problems with mysteries. And the reason I brought this up, uh, I did a, a video on um, the bride of Christ, according to scripture now, not religion. And I'm still getting people that are Confused, they ask questions or they're confused about the mystery, they're confused about what they read. And again, the reason they're confused and why they have problems with what it is they can't understand and they want to understand, I don't blame them for that. Because that mystery, as I presented, is shown completely in Scripture, from Scripture. If you leave religion out, if you leave mankind out, if you leave Satan out of the picture, you will have a clear understanding of who. The bride of Christ really is, according to Scripture now. It is the New Jerusalem. And that's found in the book of Revelation, ladies and gentlemen. But I had uh, interesting from people about questions on uh, the, the bride of Christ and the analogy. of. But see, this is what Paul was teaching uh, the people. And these people that had the questions were giving me all kinds of references from Scripture. And... Um, 
it's apparent that when they read this, they don't understand it because they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Are they really saved by grace through faith? Do they consider what it is Paul says, the Lord will give them understanding in all things? But it's not going to happen overnight. It will happen if they give it time. Because they can give, and one of the scriptures that uh, somebody left, and I will share it with you, it was in Ephesians chapter 5. He says, um, he talks about the marriage because he said, uh, and this is what the, the gentleman sent to me. He sent me, started in verse uh, 23 or 22. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands and unto the Lord. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands in everything. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, not by baptism, ladies and gentlemen, by the word. Look at verse 27, that he may present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be holy and without blemish. Verse 29, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Verse 29, for no man yet has ever hated his own flesh, but nourished it and cherished it, even as the Lord, the church. Verse 30, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Verse 31, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now here's the kicker of all of it. He wasn't understanding this. He was trying to relate it to the bride of Christ. Well, look what verse 32 says, and this is the whole reason. I did this video. Verse 32 says, This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. This whole mystery that he really laid out was symbolic. It was an analogy, if you will, of what Jesus Christ, when he was on his earthly ministry of Jesus of Nazareth, he uh, was saddened by his love for his nation of Israel, his beloved Jerusalem, as he called it. Remember how he, he felt so bad on the triumphal uh, entry that he came back into Jerusalem and saw what had happened and how they regressed or digressed and how sinful they were? And then it shows in the, new, in the book of Revelation when the new Jerusalem comes down, that is the bride of Christ. That's what scripture says. And people still kind of want to send comments about, oh, this is what it is, this is what... No, you can think what it is you want to believe. That's your choice. But don't contradict Scripture. If you want to go against Scripture, you're going against the very Word of God. Not me that presented it to you, but against God. And it says that in uh, Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8. He that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who has given unto us his Holy Spirit. Because look, you know, let me re read verse 32 to you again in Ephesians chapter 5. This is something that gentleman needs to understand and accept. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. It wasn't revealed. Not totally here. Because he was given an analogy of Jesus Christ on his earthly ministry and the physicality of the flesh of Jerusalem as a city, not a female, not some woman. It's the whole city, his beloved people, the, the city of Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem is going to be his bride of Christ. And the analogy he's talking about here also was given back when, in Genesis, when God said, that's when man will, cleave to, will leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one. And he left it at that. Mankind, since, will take something like that and try to tell you exactly what it means because he thinks it's a mystery that needs to be exposed. And Paul definitely says, this is a great mystery. But I'm talking about Christ in the church. I'm going to leave this other one alone because it does not need to be explained. It's not concerning. It is not anything that's going to have any, uh, not value, but any determining factor whether you're going to have salvation by grace through faith or not, whether you want to understand this or not. It's going to be irrelevant. 
You leave it alone. It's a mystery that it's not needed to know about. And that's the greatest thing mankind fights against when he reads about the revelations of any mysteries in this Bible. He wants to be able to tell you exactly what every mystery is. And he can expose them all to you. The mysteries that are in the scripture that are exposed to you are exposed to the word of God. And you may hear about mysteries that you just don't understand. And they've never been revealed. When you read the word, that means they've never been un, uh, uh, meant to be understood. They're never meant to be revealed. They are re remain a mystery. Because this God has the right to leave it as a mystery. Does he not? And let me close by finishing this verse again in Deuteronomy, ladies and gentlemen, 29, 29. Verse 29 in chapter 29. This is what it says. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of the law. Now, you can have an understanding in this law. You can be very comfortable if you have things in Scripture that you don't fully understand at this given time. It is not, quote, the end of the world, ladies and gentlemen, because if you're saved by grace through faith, your inner man is being renewed daily. So do not worry about it. It doesn't concern you. Okay, that's the key to understanding all things of Scripture, as Paul said. If you consider what it is Paul wrote from Romans to Philemon, you'll have a full understanding of what is, is, is needed of you or what is expected of you from God on how you're approved unto God by studying his word the way he commands you to by rightly dividing it, you're going to be safe. You're fine. That is what Jesus Christ expects you to do. He doesn't want you going to a religion and going to uh, Christianity, going to pastors, going to teachers, uh, theologians, and asking them all these questions about, well, what does this really mean? If they don't just give you scripture and leave it at that, they're giving you what they think it is they want you to understand and believe what it is they believe. Be cautious of that, ladies and gentlemen. If you ask a question about scripture, the only relevant answer that should come from a teacher is the word of God, and that's it. Nothing of his own two cents is ever telling you, well, this is what I think it says. You stay away from that. <laughs> that's not solving anything. That'll lead you down the path of destruction. But you can be freed from all this. You can understand this. You can have the spirit of Jesus Christ living in, within you, which is the revelation of the mystery of himself, to teach you all things. And these three, uh, things of the spirit of God are free to you because you understand them. Your minds are not blinded anymore. Your uh, God, Jesus Christ has shined his light into you. G, uh, God has given you over to the repentance and the acknowledging of the truth, which is the gospel of your salvation, which you are to rightly divide, and you will be able to pull yourself out of the snare of the devil, who has held you captive all this time, just by believing the gospel. And that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. This is a great mystery that is revealed in the revelation of the mystery of Paul's writings. He says in verse 1, More, but I declare unto you the gospel, which I have preached unto, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory. That will be preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered first of all unto you, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and then he was buried, and then he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Now you believe that by grace through faith. Because in Ephesians chapter 8, it says, Chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, yet it is not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. In verse 9, not of works, as any man should boast. I wonder how many people understand verse 8. When he said that it's through faith, you're going to jump right away and say, what's well, the faith of the denomination that I belong to? It's my Lutheran faith. It's my Baptist faith. It's my, no, it's nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with your faith. It is the faith of Jesus Christ because of what he told Paul and revealed to Paul that Paul revealed to you and me. It is the obedience of faith now. That's what verse 8 is all about. It is by grace through faith, but it's not your faith that saves you. If you just believe that, you'll be freed from that. You will have eternity and co-heirs with Christ in heaven, ruling and reigning in the heavenlies in understanding of all things that are of the Spirit of God, because you will live in eternity in the Spirit also. 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate your listening. It's home Bible study from my home to your home. This is Robert Haller thanking you. And always remember, ladies and gentlemen, good Lord willing. Until next time.